But her brother and I, but he was Bobby, we drove the 15 hours and loaded her stuff with another primo, uh, David, um, and a bunch of Rocky's friends, and we loaded this 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 U-Haul van and her van. I mean, till stuff was hanging off the edge. We looked like the Beverly Hills. <laughs> but Rocky came. Rocky came. Why? Because that's what family did. Sadly, there, there are people here in, in, in Fresno, I'm not going to say no names. They can't get help from family and friends to move from one apartment to the other. Come on, come on. Do you laugh? Because laughter is a sign of discomfort. And you might be that one. I remember. Remember? <laughs> when I got my first truck, the F-350. And I remember the brother said, Oh, you in trouble now. But why? Everybody's going to want to borrow it to move. And I was like, really? That's exciting. Why? Because I get to hang out with him. I might get a hamburger out of it. And you know me, I'll do anything for a sandwich. <laughs> I sold out my country for a sandwich, much less move somebody, please. You mix in a Coke and fries, I'll do it by myself. <laughs> when he's laughing, because I'm going to change your oil today. <laughs> but, I, but, but I look at this and I say, Nehemiah cried, he wept, he fasted, he did that. Some of us can't help a family member move across town. I pray, I pray every day that you're blessed by God. That you're so blessed by God that your family can count on you in a time of need when they fall behind on their bills. One thing is for certain, God will bless those that He knows He can count on to help somebody else. Nehemiah is wounded in the soul and in the spirit and he asks God for help. Now, in verse 11, Nehemiah says, O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was the cupbearer to the king. Now, Nehemiah is praying to God. He's saying, God, I want you to intervene in something. I want you to get involved in something. God, I am making this a problem between good and evil. I am making this something between the enemy of this world and the God of this world. He said, God, I'm getting you involved in this problem. When he started praying to God, he was saying, my loved one's situation isn't there just, just theirs alone. God, I'm asking you to make it a godly, a spiritual matter. Glorify your name, God. Glorify your name as we go and help this person in need. Now, he's asking for help. Nehemiah is asking for help. I want to tell you something. There's nothing too big for any of you that you cannot get done with just a little help. With just a little help. Just a little help. You know how I came about this? I was going to preach about somebody else. But on, on Thursday, I woke my wife up. I said, dear, I know it's summer and you slip in. You're the best teacher in Fresno. Everybody knows that. It's all over the paper. Educator of the year, we know. But you need to wake up. Because I have a dilemma. And Ralph's not here. So I woke her up early in the morning, about 6 o'clock in the morning. She goes, okay, tell me here what's going on. She hadn't had her coffee yet, so I didn't expect it to be too good. I said, dear, uh, we need $17,000. And I look at the church, and I don't know if the church can do it. I need 14 people to give $100 a month, above their tithes and offerings. Or 28 people of $50 a month. Or 70 people of just 1000 in one shot. Or I can ask my millionaire friend for the money. But I don't want to ask him for money because when I got married, I didn't have padrinos because my dad said, you can't have padrinos pay the bills. So if you can't afford to get married, then you shouldn't get married. I was like, mm hmm? <laughs> my wife goes, you can't do this alone. You need to ask for help. So as I was reading my devotional, I went to a book where it talks about Nehemiah and the whole thing was about Nehemiah asking for help. And I was like, Lord, of all the days for me to pick up this book, I got a hundred and some books and I pick up this one and have it open to this chapter. I don't like it. <laughs> but it's, it, it was all about asking for help. And what did I just tell my wife? I can't ask nobody for help. I got my peeps right here. We can do this. Get car washes, sell raspados, make some tamales. The way our parents did it. 
I went to get through that, Pastor. I, I just got my nails done. I don't know. I'm rolling tortillas. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> might, might, get, might get the Maseca inside of the nails. <laughs> See these little diamond looking fake rhinestone things? I can't, you know, I, just, I don't know. Can't be in that, that sauna like kitchen at the church. My, my, my curls can just go flat. <laughs> My monkey dropping lipstick could just run down my face. <laughs> I said fish droppings earlier, didn't <laughs> I don't know, Pastor. I just don't know. <laughs> don't turn me off. I'm just getting started. But in reading this, it said, Nehemiah did not go ask for help until he was willing to do something first. I, I can't go ask somebody for money until I've asked our people for money. I, I can't. Somebody will say, well, he's rich. Well, God, why do you think he's rich? Because he invests in churches. Why give somebody else that blessing and that opportunity before you give it to your own people? You could miss out on a blessing because I went somewhere else to depend on somebody else. But Nehemiah asked for help. He went to Artaxerxes and he said, oh, Artaxerxes, great king. My people are in need. But see, before he went to that king, he asked God. This wounded warrior does something about the emotional response when he heard the news. It may have seemed like a huge problem to him that he possibly could do nothing about, but he tried anyway. How many of you sitting here this morning, you saw a need? You saw something, you said, this is too big. I, 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 I can't do nothing about this. There's, I, I, there's no way. What, what is my near little going to... And I'm here to tell you this morning, no matter how big it is, when we get together and we have help, we can do more than we can do by ourselves. Amen. So you might have a loved one in need. You might have a cousin. You might have a neighbor. You might have something. If you can't do it by yourself, get other people together and help. But it also goes for those of you that are in need. You need to learn how to ask for help. The Bible says we do not have because we do not ask. If you need help, ask. This wounded warrior does something about the emotion. Let me tell you something. There is no problem too big for God. But sometimes we're sitting here asking God for miracles when all we need is help. Let me say that again. Sometimes we're fasting and praying, asking God for miracles when all we need is help. God looks down from him and says, you don't need a miracle. You need help. You want me to provide this when you've got three family members that can't. You want me to do this for you when you can do some of the work. Come on, come on. The, pro the problem is sometimes we're facing things that we think are insurmountable, and sometimes they are. You were never made to handle things on your, uh, on your own like my wife told me on Thursday. You cannot possibly help everyone you know who is in need, but you may be able to, at some point, direct someone to where they can get help. You can say, you know what? I see what you're going through, and I went through that, and I went to this place, and I got help. I went to this place, and they did this for me. Or I went to that place, and they did that for me. When we take our eyes off of ourselves long enough, God is able to minister to others through us. Because we know where to get the help. The key is we need to start feeling something about all the suffering around us. We need to quit turning a blind eye or a deaf ear and start being led by the Holy Spirit to make a difference in somebody else's life. Let your spirit feel the pain that others are feeling, especially those related to you. I'd be willing to bet that right now every one of us has a relative or a loved one, somebody we know, that could really use our help. They could really use our help. Is your spirit broken? Is your spirit soft enough? Is your spirit in tune with the Spirit of God? Enough to be led by the Holy Spirit to help a relative in need. Chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Nehemiah said to the people when he got there to his people, You see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins. Its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. And we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king has said to me. And they all said, let us start rebuilding. And they began the good work. These people were sitting in filth and ruin, disgraced, falling apart. They're sitting there doing nothing about it. But along came Nehemiah and said, we can fix this. Along came Nehemiah and said, we can do it. And that's all they needed was to see that somebody else cared. 
That's all they needed was a little. They, they, didn't, they didn't need a handout. They needed a hand up. They needed to see that somebody was willing to come alongside them. Amen. But it started with a wounded spirit. 